In culinary school, I learned the basic techniques for making roasted chicken. But over the years, I've experimented with ways to make it even better. This recipe yields super crispy brown skin and tender slices. Plus, I've made it a complete meal with vegetables and a pan sauce. Elevating the chicken on a bed of vegetables prevents the meat from steaming in its own juices. This simple technique ensures a super crispy skin. Before you get started, make sure to preheat the oven to 475 degrees so it's nice and hot. I like to use a variety of sturdy root vegetables like onions, celery, and carrots. But if you want to switch things up, you can use potatoes or butternut squash. The first thing we're going to do is cut the onions. Okay, to start, you're going to want to cut both ends. Just cut the top off first. And then cut this root end. You want to leave it intact so that the wedges stay together. Cut it down the middle. Okay, and then we're going to cut each half into four wedges. Now we have the celery. We're going to just trim stem a little bit and then cut them into three inch pieces. For the carrots, I already peeled them, so now we're going to cut them into two inch pieces. And I like to cut it on a bias because they're a little bit prettier that way when you present them. Now that everything's cut, I'm going to prepare the bed of vegetables. Add the cut onions, chopped celery, chopped carrots, one tablespoon olive oil, a half teaspoon salt, and a quarter teaspoon black pepper. Stir the ingredients to combine. Spread them out in an even layer and add five sprigs of thyme and three sprigs of rosemary on top. To prepare the chicken, you're going to want to remove the neck and any innards from the cavity. These actually add a lot of flavor to soups and stews, so you might want to save them. Okay, and it's really super important to dry the surface and the cavity of the chicken so that you can remove any excess moisture. You know, I've also found that it works really well to place it into the refrigerator and that helps dry the surface even more. And don't forget to flip the chicken over and get the underside too. Season the cavity with a half teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon black pepper. Add four cloves of crushed garlic, five sprigs of thyme, and two sprigs of rosemary. Massage the inside of the bird to infuse it with the flavors. Trussing prevents the chicken breast from drying out due to an exposed cavity. Let me show you how to do this. The first thing you want to do is make sure that the legs are facing towards you and then you're going to tuck the wings right here behind the chicken. Kind of like it's relaxing on a beach. <laughs> then you're going to take some kitchen twine. I have about three feet. You're going to place it in the center right here. And then you just pull the string back along the side and right under the crown of the breast you're going to tie it into a knot. So watch this. The breast gets nice and plump. I like to tie it an extra time so that it stays nice and taut. Okay, now you're going to bring the legs together like this, cross them over, and just tie the string. I like to make it into a pretty little bow. Now let's get the chicken buttered up and ready for roasting. Melt two tablespoons of butter. Place the chicken breast side up and brush with a third of the butter. Then generously season with salt and pepper. Flip the chicken over and brush with additional butter. Then season with salt and pepper. Save the remaining butter to baste the chicken later. If you want, you can use olive oil or ghee instead of butter. They don't contain any water, so it's going to give a crispier skin. However, it doesn't have those milk solids, so it's not going to brown as much. Place the chicken breast side down on top of the vegetables. Transfer to the oven and roast for 30 minutes. 
Oven roasting the chicken breast side down ensures that the thighs and the legs get cooked first. This prevents undercooked sections. The next thing we're going to want to do is flip over the chicken. So grab some paper towels and then make sure that the cavity is facing away from you so that the hot juices don't get on your skin. And then just carefully give it a quick little flip. I like to add a little bit more butter on the surface to ensure that the breast gets nice and crispy. And make sure you get the sides of the wings. Okay. Now we're gonna add the chicken back into the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. Wow, this looks incredible. The next thing we have to do is check for doneness. So I'm gonna use my instant read thermometer and you're gonna check in the thickest part of the breast. It should read about 160 to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. This is perfect. And then you're gonna check the thigh. And in the thigh area, it should be, make sure you don't hit a bone. The thickest part of the thigh is right here. It should be between 165 to 170. And then if you want, you can also check in between the thigh and the breast. That's also a thick area too. Perfect. It's ready to go. We're going to let this rest for 20 minutes before we slice. Meanwhile, we're gonna make the gravy. Discard any of the herbs in the pan and then you're just going to scoop out all of these wonderful roasted vegetables into a large bowl. And at the bottom of the pan, you're gonna have all these amazing juices. It's gonna be flavored with garlic, the fats from the chicken, and herbs, salt and pepper. So we're definitely gonna to wanna to use that for the pan sauce. Okay, we're going to pour the drippings into a fat separator. So just be careful because this pan is gonna be really hot. You're going to want to let the fat rise to the top because it's less dense than the juices. And then we're gonna use the juices to make the sauce. Add just enough chicken stock or broth to reach one cup of liquid total. In the same skillet used to roast the chicken, make the gravy. Alternatively, you can use a clean large skillet. Heat one tablespoon of butter and one tablespoon of flour over medium heat. Once the butter melts, whisk until the flour mixture turns pale yellow, about one minute. Gradually whisk in one cup of the defatted pan juices and stock mixture until the sauce lightly thickens, about two to four minutes. Season with salt and pepper to taste. I made the gravy in the same pan that I used to roast the chicken because it's gonna have a ton of fond and browned, beautiful flavors in the pan that we wanna get into the sauce. Now we're going to strain the gravy so that it's nice and smooth. Okay, now it's time to carve the chicken. The first thing we wanna do is cut off the kitchen twine. So if you just pull the chicken away right here, going to cut the skin, you can see it opening up, and you just pull the leg and the thigh away from the bird. And there's this amazing portion back here called the oyster that you're not going to want to miss. It's a very tender piece of chicken. There's gonna be cartilage and bone, so you don't wanna cut through the bone, but the cartilage is pretty soft. And just do little slices until the thigh and leg comes off like that. I'm gonna repeat with the other side. So just cut through the skin, Get separate the thigh a little bit. You kinda of wanna work with the chicken and not against it, because there's a lot of bone and cartilage, so you just kinda of pull and tug and let it naturally kinda of pull away from the carcass. Okay, and if you want to cut this down further, there's a little bit of a membrane right here that you could just slice right through. So remember, we're not trying to cut through bone. Just find that membrane again, right in the middle. Perfect. And then now we're gonna cut through, there's this bone that runs through the center of the, the chicken breast, so we're gonna cut, wanna cut alongside of it and just down to hit the bone right there. And then you're just gonna slide the knife kind of parallel to the rib cage, just gently releasing it. And then you can kind of just cut the breast off and then the wing comes off too. So you could have either cut the wing off 
um, earlier or keep it on, but I like to kind of just take it off. And then any of these extra pieces you could just have as a snack or add to some soup. But again, cut down the side of that bone down the middle and just slide the knife down, kind of gently going parallel to the carcass because you want to get as much as the meat off of it as possible. And just little sawing motions, just be gentle with it. And this one, you want to keep the wing on, just cut it alongside the bone. There it go. So again, you can keep it on, or I like to cut it off. Okay, so you have your wings, your drumettes, it's your carcass if you want to make soup. But then you can slice the chicken breast, slice it like this. And I go about a half an inch. And then when you want to plate it up, you can actually have a nice fan. So it looks nice and pretty. There you have it. Once you've mastered this recipe and technique, you can use the leftovers to make this dish right here. I hope you enjoyed learning the science behind roasted chicken. See you in the next video.